The Time Machine Did It, Chapter 12 I took a walk around town. It was like I was living in a history book. A stinking history book. I never did like history when I was in school, and this wasn't increasing my fondness for the subject. History is over, I've always felt. Let's move on. I suppose some people would have found it charming to suddenly find themselves in an earlier, simpler time, where everyone was friendly and stupid, but I didn't. Try getting your mail in a situation like that. It can't be done. The one thing that made me feel better was knowing that I had screwed up cases a lot worse than this before. As I walked, I calmly took stock of my situation. Number one, I didn't have the time machine anymore. So, number two, I was doomed. I calmly tried to think of a number three. There wasn't a number three. Then I remembered something that I had gotten out of a lot of tight that had gotten me out of a lot of tight thoughts before. Hysteria. It might work in this situation. I would give it a try. So I ran down the street, screaming and waving my arms, then curled up in a ball on the sidewalk and rolled all over the place, yelling and gibbering. This was a comp this accompl all this accomplished nothing. Hysteria, I discovered, didn't work in a situation like this. Make a note of that. When I calmed down enough to get my tongue out of my windpipe, it came to me that a person in my situation needed the help of a scientist. Since I didn't have access to Professor Groggins, I went to a nearby physics lab laboratory and asked to talk to the guy with the biggest brain. There was a whispered conference amongst the physicists. Tape measures, skull saws, and forceps were brought out. Then finally one of them came forward to talk to me with a slight smirk on his face. I outlined my problem for him as best I knew how. We quickly got into a shouting match, with him saying time travel couldn't be done, and me saying, then explain my presence here, asshole. So he said, make me. And I said, I sure would in just about a minute. Then he punched me in the stomach. When I got my breath back, we agreed to disagree, and I left. So much for the scientific approach. I knew at the time that it didn't make a lot of sense, but I was getting kind of desperate and needed to talk to Professor Groggins, so I went to a telegraph office with the idea of sending a telegram to 2003. I figured the worst that could happen would be I'd be out of a couple of bucks, and then the rest of the telegram sending public would give me the horse laugh, which is what happened, so I was right in a way. Score one for me. The people behind the counter didn't know what I was talking about at first, and they still didn't know what I was talking about a couple of hours later. They said they didn't know where to send my telegram. While I was trying to get them to give it a try anyway, what the heck, I pointed out, the line behind me had gotten really long and angry. It has always amazed me how angry people can get at my stupidity. How do they think I feel? They only have to be around me a couple hours at a time. I've got me all day. In the end, they flatly refused to send my telegram. I told them I was going to complain to somebody, and they said that's what they'd do, so we left it like that. While I was fuming outside of the telegraph office, debating whether or not to go back in and try again, maybe this time claiming I had a gun, or claiming that I had a gun the last time, but didn't now, I suddenly remembered the long and tedious explanations I had received from Professor Groggins about how the time machine worked. This opened up a, ho a whole new line of thought. Maybe I could describe the time machine well enough so that a local artisan here in this time period could build one for me. I walked to a nearby gas station and discussed the matter with a likely-looking mechanic. I had made a crude drawing of the briefcase and its contents. I showed it to the mechanic and asked him if he could build it. It's shaped like a briefcase, I told him, but that's only part of the story. It's also got all sorts of wheels and blinking lights and things inside, as illustrated here, because it's a time machine as well as a briefcase. It's two things in one. He looked my drawing over and frowned. Well, I can build the briefcase easy enough, but I can only guess about what else to put inside it. Some of these shapes you've drawn don't exist in nature. Do the best I, do the best you can, I told him. That's all anyone can ask. With me holding over his shoulder and kind of rooting him on and shouting words of encouragement and reminding him to hurry up, he fashioned something that looked a lot like my time machine. It had the same kind of blinking lights, dials to indicate the passage of years and so on. I didn't know how tricky stuff like this was, but I figured if the space-time continuum wasn't paying much attention today, if it was looking out the window or chatting on the phone with the fourth dimension or something, this might work. 
I took the time machine outside, found a phone booth, and got inside. Normally at this point I would have set the dials for September 14th, 2003, but this version didn't have dials like that. There was just a space for me to write the date in with a grease pencil. I did so and turned on the machine. The blast shot me out of the phone booth and halfway down the street where I banged off a parked car. When I regained consciousness, I asked the nearest gawker what year it was. He told me that it was 1941. March 14th. The same day it had been when I had left. I looked at my watch. It was 4.30 in the afternoon. That meant five hours had passed. I was pretty satisfied with that. Five hours closer to home, I thought. It's a start. Hot dog. But my excitement faded when a street urchin, who was sitting on the curb next to me blowing bubbles, informed me that I had been laying on the asphalt bleeding for five hours. So the machine hadn't actually propelled me forward in time. It had just knocked me out for most of the day. A hammer could have done that. I went back to the gas station, full of righteous ind indignation and buyer's remorse. I slapped the time machine down in front of the mechanic and informed him that it didn't work. I mean, not at all. He said he was sorry. Sorry doesn't get me back to 2003, I said, waggling a finger at the man. This is a lemon. I'm not paying you for this. Do they have a better business bureau in this time period? He hesitated for a moment, moved sideways to the left to block my view of something, then said no, there wasn't one. Lucky for him.